little doubt about the main news today, all started by the front page of the Irish Independent this morning. Dublin GEA stars hold secret training despite COVID rules. Johnny Cooper and Footballer of the Year Brian Fenton among those photographed at a training session yesterday morning at Inish Falls GEA Club. At least nine players and a trainer there. Uh, this happening barely 12 hours after Crow Park issued a circular to all clubs and counties warning them that any breaches of the current ban on collective training could put the GEA's overall plans for a return in serious jeopardy. Throughout the day, the GEA have got involved. They have started their own investigation, expressing their frustration and extreme disappointment with the Dublin Footballers Collective Training Session. The Gardaí are also investigating exactly what happened as well. And there's been any amount of comment all leading up to the statement from Dublin GEA this evening, which read that Dublin GEA acknowledged that following an investigation this afternoon, there was a breach of COVID-19 guidelines yesterday morning. The County Management Committee have suspended the Dublin senior football manager Desi Farrell for 12 weeks with immediate effect. The Dublin senior football management and players recognised that this was a serious error of judgment and apologise unreservedly for their actions. Jack Chambers, the Minister for Sport, was on News Talk a little bit earlier today. Here's what he had to say. Well, look, I, I think what, what we need to see now is the... We've had, I've had this contact from my officials in the Department of Sport with the GEA this morning, reflecting our disappointment and frustration with what has happened. Um, the GEA now need to investigate it and establish the facts and follow through accordingly. Um, but I, what I would say is that we've got 32 counties across the country, um, many of whom aren't training and are waiting for the date of the 19th of April across a GEA, Ladies Football and Camogie. Uh, and uh, I think we have to allow uh, that to proceed accordingly and uh, we need to reinforce the fact that no team should train until they're allowed to do so. We've got many people across society who can't, who are obviously restricted in, in terms of the number of kilometres they can travel, the people they can meet uh, attending funerals. And that's the broader frustration, I think, that's reflected today. Uh, and we need to, you know, we it, many GA players are important role models and have been important role models. And they've shown great commitment and dedication to showing leadership over the last 12 months. Uh, and I think what we need from today uh, is you know proper investigation by the GA and follow through and they've said they'll do that and breaches will be dealt with. So that was the Minister for Sport Jack Chambers speaking earlier on News Talk Breakfast the former president of the GAA Sean Kelly was on here's what he had to say. This is true it's surprising and very disappointing especially coming from the six in row dubs as a responsibility with that accolade to give good example and every club and every county in the country are probably frustrated that they cannot get back on the field but there is a roadmap there the GA have outlined the guidelines and everybody has to stick by them but I think the GA will certainly have to look at it very strongly and you have to be consistent in the way you apply the rules they have to apply to everybody because you're all Ireland champions are just at the very bottom of the ladder because this is a serious situation and hopefully that it was a once-off breach it won't happen again because if it goes without some form of sanction then others will say why can't we do the same so it has created a, a very difficult dilemma for the GA. It certainly has. To discuss this, I'm joined by the Irish Independence, Colm Keyes, and the current Offaly football manager, John Monk. Uh, good evening to you both. Uh, Colm, I've run through the timeline of the day just there. The news this evening then that Desi Farrell has been suspended for 12 weeks. I can't imagine that's the end of this. Uh, no, I would imagine that the uh, GAA will want to as conduct their own investigation into this and apply their own penalties. Uh, obviously, this is a preemptive strike from from Dublin to, you know, to register obviously their disapproval of it uh, from from the county board's point of view, or at least to be seen to register disapproval and acknowledge the the wrong. The wrong of it, I suppose, uh, but the GAA are the ultimate uh, arbiters in this and dispensers of discipline. And I'm sure they'll want to weigh up uh, whatever uh, other aspects need to be weigh up, weighed up on this. And while three months is consistent with what Ronan McCarthy got, obviously Paddy Talley from down got, uh, he got two months, but Ronan McCarthy's three months, that's consistent with it. Will it be left at that, given the fact that it's quite clear since February 10th that GA no longer have uh, elite status or inter-county teams no longer have the elite status since February. That wasn't the case, or at least it wasn't known when the Cork and Down breaches took place. Uh, well, Down are obviously in a different jurisdiction in that respect. So 
uh, you know, the elite status was thought to be there in in early January. So that probably, uh, with regard to the state, would could have got approval, even though the federation, in this case the GA, didn't weren't weren't allowing it. So there were slightly different circumstances. Mm-hmm. Albeit, I think three months will probably be it, and if we get Desi Farrell back for the for the Leinster quarter final, uh, given what we think we know about the schedule, is there any expectation there any... that any of the players will be sanctioned? No, because that's not consistent with what has gone before. Uh, obviously, the last year, um, when prior to the resumption of the club season, when the GA were trying to you know in, enforce some rules and regulations around the uh, the overlap between the two seasons or the potential overlap they called in the chairs but last june or late june early july and uh, impressed upon them that it would be managers and at the time county chairs that would uh, that would bear the brunt for any breach and that's what happened in january albeit the county chairs in in both instances uh, weren't weren't suspended but they were certainly the indications given to chairpersons uh, at that meeting last July that they would be held responsible for any such breaches. But as I said, it didn't happen. It didn't happen in uh, in January. And it's not consistent that players pl- players would be suspended for this. No, I would mm. not believe so. It does raise a huge amount of questions as to who knew what. We'll come to those in a moment. But John Mann, the Offaly football manager, is with us as well. John, to put it mildly, this is a massive error of judgment from the Dublin footballers and management team. But it's also seen by thousands of people around the country as a massive kick in the teeth to them who have obeyed the rules, who have sacrificed so much over the last year that the rules don't apply to a certain cohort of people, that the Dublin footballers somehow thought that they were above the rules that everybody else is abiding to. What have you made of it? Yeah, I had a long conversation with our chairman, Michael Dyke, in office last night. And it never entered my mind during our discussion that went on for about 35 minutes and I was discussing about returning to train uh, on the 19th. With effect from the 19th, I was looking at coordinating the medical cover and food cover and what we'd be allowed to do when we get to Kilcormack, our training venue in, on, in Offaly. But never once did it cross my mind to try and jump ahead of the queue and get a, a coordinated training session. I was, I won't say I was disappointed when I, when I heard this morning, I woke to the news. I wasn't, disappointment would be, would be the wrong phrase to use. I was surprised. I, I'll be honest with you, the Dubs, have, in fairness to them, have been great role models. I mean, they've never, so Pat Galway went in there a number of years ago, followed by Jim Gavin and now, uh, obviously, Desi. They've been fantastic role models, and they're, I marvel at how they have sustained it and never squeaky clean, never appears to be in trouble. And believe you me, there are always little issues that have to be dealt with, little scrapes along the way when you're managing a team. But Dublin have done it exceptionally well and they've kept under the radar, squeaky clean. That's how I was quite shocked and surprised, particularly to have formalised it with a trainer uh, um, being involved. Like, I mean, I do know around the country, there's a huge element of frustration with everybody, every cohort, whether you're a cyclist or whether you can't go out with the, the local club cycling or whether you're a, 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 an intercounty footballer or a club footballer. And uh, I know I have my son here who is a, a, a club footballer. He's very, very frustrated. He's missing it terribly. We all are missing it terribly. I am missing it terribly. But uh, I was really, really surprised to think that the dogs uh, would be so naive. Where, uh, um, Whoever tipped them off about the seven or eight or nine. I wonder where were the other 30? Where were they training? Well, well uh, uh, Colum Keyes, uh, what about that question that does come up as to there was eight or nine players there? Uh, it does seem as though it was a non-contact training session, but there was a trainer with them and there's no doubt they weren't just there for a chat to check in with each other. But that's a big squad that Dublin generally have of 40. So uh, I presume questions are now being asked as to well, the tip-off came, this was happening, where were the other 30 players? And was this a regular thing, not just yesterday, but over the last few weeks? Well, they are legitimate questions, Nathan, because, you know, if you walk out onto a pitch which should be closed at 7 o'clock in the morning, um, you'd you'd have to wonder, is it the first time? I would certainly wonder, is it the first time? And could you go back to last summer, for instance, and say, well, were any of these teams training then? Either were Dublin training? You have to ask that question now, that you know it seemed easy enough and that they would get out in, onto that pitch at that time and uh, maybe expect not to be seen or not to 
uh, for nobody to hear about it. So um, you would have to ask that question. Where as to where were the others? You know, I couldn't couldn't speculate upon that, but there were certainly you know up to nine players there, and clearly an instructor uh, overseeing the session. So uh, yeah, legitimate question, Nathan, for sure. Where where was everyone else? And questions, as Cullum said there, John, that everyone is asking now as to what's going on around the rest of the country because Dublin were the team who had incredible integrity built around them and if they're doing this what's everyone else doing you approached it straight away there to say this wasn't us because the first question you have to ask now everybody is well have you had sessions and an eye is going to be cast on every county every county manager rumors have been swirling for weeks anyways this is going to do a huge amount of damage to the gea Uh, yeah and i i can i would imagine uh government officials would have been in contact with Croke park this morning uh, Dublin, uh, I suppose, county board has sold them a little dummy by seeming to uh, uh, implement their own uh, punishment for Desi. I don't think it will stop there, incidentally. I think that the GA, whatever a punishment, I don't know, how can you punish the Dubs? A fine? I mean, I would rather see um, every inter county footballer in Dublin being punished, maybe uh, dispatched them around the country when this COVID has passed to take training sessions in clubs or something. That might be a punishment. Do it for your chart. But uh, coming in with a fine or a suspension, it's, uh, it's not a whole lot. We look, at the reality is we kind of catch them. The dogs are so far ahead of everybody. They didn't need this, uh, um, um, a training session. Like, I mean, the Offaly boys need it. Maybe the Leach boys or the Wicklow lads in, in an extra campaign. But, uh, well, what are it's your not players a- doing, John? Have you, have you come out under any pressure from anybody within the county, from players who, as you say, like uh, everybody else, are fed up and just want to get back and feel, listen, we're all fit young men in our 20s. What harm in us getting together for a bit of fitness training? Have you had any of those conversations? Oh, we have. I, I, I've had Zoom call. I have a Zoom call tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. I was supposed to have one, one this evening uh, with them. I spoke to uh, six or seven players last Monday. This is what we're doing ongoing. And yes, players are training. They're training, though, individually. So they may, um, at this stage, there might, they might be uh, two going out with the ball. I have, I, I tell you, um, honestly, I have not in any way endorsed or uh, um, um, uh, suggested that any Aussie footballer uh, would go out and train, and train together. That's not what we um, um, have done in Offaly. I, I'm sticking to the protocols and the procedures are there. I don't want to break them. I wouldn't be allowed. I mean, my, my, Michael Dignan, um, our chairman of would not facilitate John Mohan organizing a training session uh, for six or seven people. I wouldn't ask him because I recognize that the rules are there. I don't want to break the rules. I've seen what happened to down in Cork, and uh, I can understand there's a huge element of frustration in society, generally speaking. And more importantly, I don't want to bring COVID home with me. So, and apparently, uh, this is how it spreads guys mixing and mingling. Those eight or nine lads, uh, dubs, I'm sure they have work. I don't know if they have to work in the HSE or what kind of level of work they have. But I, I know um, I, I'm trying to go to a to a physio uh, down here and I'm waiting to see if the guy said, John, I can't see it. He said, because my, my mother-in-law is an elderly person she lives with it and I don't want to take a chance of bringing COVID into her house. So we have all that scenario uh, coming into play. But uh, look, it, 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 it was, I don't think you can really punish them. And I, I, I don't know what punishment is for the dogs, no, no matter what you do. But uh, I can imagine Pro Park uh, will have taken a call from government officials to say, look, at you deal with it. And I don't think it will stop within three months. Whatever they're going to do, I have no idea. I can only speculate what might happen, but I, I really don't know what, how they can approach them. Well, what does happen then, Colm? Because this came very shortly after Tom Ryan sent out that circular. And if you go on the Dublin GEA website, the first post is still that circular from Tom Ryan where it says, it's more important than ever that no collective training sessions are held between now and the government indicated return dates. Breaches in this context will not only be dealt with under our own rules, but would likely put the broader plan to return to activity in serious jeopardy. This is the Dublin footballers, the most lauded sports team in the country, the most successful GEA team we have ever seen, and they have breached those rules. Has there been any talk at all about this putting the return to activity in serious jeopardy? Well, that element of the statement was really what what jumped out at me on, on Tuesday night, first of all, And then when this story obviously came to light, you set this story in the context of that GA statement the night before. And then you say, well, is there something that they know that they're actually putting this across to say that everything else could be jeopardized by any potential breach? I have to say, I don't think it will jeopardize the further rollout. I think if there was another incident like this, 
I think it definitely would at that stage. But right now, I think it will be looked at in isolation by officials. And the GA will move, I think. And I think the penalties will will be uh, a little more severe than maybe what Dublin have proposed. I think there'll be add-ons. Obviously, Cork and Down lost home advantage for a league game. I think that'll probably, that will apply here. Can't speculate. Maybe there'll be an, an extra month added to this suspension. Maybe not. Maybe it will be consistent with Ronan McCarthy. But it was a very weighty statement by the GAA on Tuesday evening. And it certainly pointed to any discrepancy here and we we could be in trouble. So really that fear was expressed by the GAA themselves on Tuesday night, not by anybody else, by the GAA themselves. They put that out there. And obviously that still that still potentially holds. But my belief is that no, there won't be any issue for now. But I think if another case was to crop up and maybe one more after that, then I think that things could be in jeopardy. In terms of the actual issues away from just the COVID rule breach column, in terms of insurance for the players who were there yesterday morning, are they covered by insurance? Uh, expenses, the GPA's role in all of this, that their members were going out breaching the rules. What's the fallout likely from that? Uh, well, there's no insurance, first of all. The insurance scheme is suspended until the season is back up and running, and that applies from the 19th of uh, April in terms of inter-county players and the 26th for underage underage kids. And whenever club players get back, well, that season, the insurance will will kick back in then. So obviously, you know, they they weren't covered, but I'm quite sure cover would be provided by Dublin in some way. I mean, I don't think any of them, if anything happened, would be would be left wanting. I think that's probably probably clear. The fact of the matter is that uh is that uh these pitches were supposed to be closed and uh the Dublin chief executive John Costello only last week issued a circular to say that all premises, all GA facilities should remain closed. In terms of in terms of the GPA, I would think their message would have been to their membership to you know observe the rules in whatever way you can. And clearly, clearly that's not the case. And yes, we've all heard anecdotal evidence uh, of of others, but it's all very well having anecdotal evidence until you actually have the evidence. And the evidence is here in this case. So you know we make the presumption and the perception is certainly out there that other intercounty teams have been breaching and have wanted to go and you know some people will shrug their shoulders and that and say well what's the big deal about a few guys kicking a ball but the bigger picture is that state and ga rules have been contravened and whether we like them or not they're there just like taxes or just like anything else they're there and we must observe them as much as we can and you know the best team the team at the very apex of not just ga but perhaps even irish sport the most revealing leaders and as you know uh, pillars of community and all of that and that has been steadily built up over the last decade to the point where you know you you would think that they were untouchable in so many ways and yet here they are finding themselves in a corner defending a, a breach of training which to some as I said might not be the biggest deal but you have to look at it in the context of the country at the moment and the fact that it was only two weeks to go before before that this you know the green light was given for inter-county training. Mm. Uh, Desi Farrell, John, has taken the 12-week suspension from the D- Dublin County Board. As Cullum says, there may be further ramifications coming down the line. And we have to imagine that as the Dublin manager, that he knew this was happening. And I think for a lot of people, it underlines that it is this unstoppable monster of the inter-county game that no matter what the rules are, we must train, we must get an edge no matter what. It, it just seems to have gone to a completely insane level now. Yeah, I have to say, you, you would admire them, like those guys at 7 a.m. They were training at 7, so I'm sure some of them were up at 6 a.m. to get there. Yeah, they have incredible discipline. And, I, you know, we've seen the names, and I think Brian Fenton was there, Johnny Cooper, uh, Brian Howard, you know, household names. But uh, they're an amazing group, a bunch of guys to have that kind of appetite to come and train after all the all our medals they have. And you, you've got to admire them for that. But well, getting back to, to, to the point earlier on, it's the optics of it right now that looks so bad because we're all suffering. Everybody, everyone, every uh, cohort of society is struggling. I'm at work every day. I'm lucky enough to be able to go to work every day. But I meet uh, people just around the place and this particular lockdown has really tested um, every individual. And, to, and just the optics of that photograph, guys out find themselves having fun and more or less the two fingers, it just looks bad. It, it, it looks terrible. 
And I don't think there was any need for it, particularly Dubs. Like, I mean, they're strolling through lesser titles for a bit of fun. Like, I mean, the reality is, you know, you, you applaud a team now that holds them maybe to a 10 or 12 point de uh, uh, defeat. That's how good and how strong they are. Above any team in the country, they didn't need the session right now. You know, this is the other thing. You know, so look at it. Uh, I, I just, I, I won't say disappointed. I just, I was surprised to see that they, that they're the, um, uh, training at 7 a.m. And maybe that's how strong they are. They're just so focused and disciplined that they don't need to read papers. They're just dedicated to the cause and they couldn't, they couldn't stop. Who knows? And uh, but I look at it's quite bizarre. It's unfortunate that we're talking about it right now because, you know, we've only uh, we've only a couple of weeks to go. And uh, that's the great news we got. I, I we all anticipated being back on Monday. I felt in the last couple of weeks that wouldn't be the case. I had hoped for the twelfth, but the nineteenth is just so I can nearly touch it. Mm. And uh, there's an element of excitement amongst the county footballers. And I I know engaging with my own lads and awfully. They really are excited and looking forward to getting back, as anyone would. It's a bit, a bit like Christmas, getting back to play, because we, I haven't seen them in months. I haven't physically, uh, you know, I, I brought in a couple of guys into the panel last uh, November, December. I haven't physically met them. So, uh, yeah, an element of excitement in getting back. And, uh, you know, I don't mind waiting for the, uh, the couple of weeks. And I'd stick to the rules, um, like, every, well, I assume most counties. I had another a chat with, uh, with uh, one or two uh, Intercounty managers and coaches um, this evening, and of course the topic of discussion is the dogs. What do you think of this, John? And I have to say, I was quite surprised. You know, but look at it'll be dealt with. Core Park will come in, and it'll be dealt with, and it'll move on. And it's just the optics of it now. It's today's news, and hopefully it'll it'll move on. Uh, it will, and the sanctions will take place, Cullum. And there's been all sorts of rumours for weeks about uh, intercounty teams taking part in training sessions, and it's probably testament to how high the dubs reputation was that most people when they looked at that paper this morning the front page were shocked and surprised that it was dublin who were engaging in this and if anything it's not the physical punishment of 12 week suspensions or 16 weeks or taking them out of home games for the league that will be the longest lasting impact this was a group of players who were seen as whiter than white the most successful team in the history of the GEA who regardless of the conversations around funding did things the right way they were proper role models not just for people around Dublin but for around the country and that the reputational damage of this is going to be far more longer lasting and maybe far more damaging for Dublin than any suspension is going to be yeah quite possibly I think you know will it will it impact them on the field this year and in years ahead of course it won't Dublin will still you know this this will move on but I suppose there's always a, a bookmark for for what happened on <clears throat> on Wednesday morning in Inish Fails. And as I said earlier, you know, they've almost been untouchable. And you use the words whiter than white. Did things did things by the book, by and large, you know, uh, no blemishes there, right through almost a decade. Few disciplinary issues here and there, you know, towards the end of all Ireland finals, where you might have made a case against it, but few and far between, they did their business so clinically, meticulously, all of that. And just have got a bit of a little bit loose here, just a little bit loose here, and have been obviously caught doing, you know, contravening rules in this regard. And because there has been so little about them in this regard, this will stand out. And given 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 their reputation, uh, given their reputation for doing things the right way under Jim Gavin and under Desi Farrell, and as John said, be, Pat Gilroy before that, it does it does leave a little bit of a blemish. Mm. One of the issues. John, is that you're back training then in two weeks and we're still waiting for the final calendar to be released, but that maybe teams feel they need to be back in training right now in terms of preventing injuries, building up that strength and conditioning. Is that a fair excuse that while they've broken the rules, that county managers like yourself are going to be in a difficult position around players' fitness and being ready for the league and championship, whatever way it shapes up? It, it, it is a concern, Nathan, and it's something I'm I'm discussing with our uh, strength and conditioning guys and our, uh, and our coaches are involved with me in Offaly. And we, we, we would have a concern. I think uh, we saw last year that the, uh, I think there was, um, despite the, 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 uh, the lockdown and the shortened season, I think the uh, insurance claims of Cork Park were still quite high because we ex experienced a lot of t uh, soft tissue injuries and other kinds of injuries uh, when players returned after the lockdown. It is a concern because of the no physical contact. We, we play a contact sport, obviously, these guys have been training in gyms. They'll be like little monsters when they come back. 
Uh, but unfortunately, that type of uh, interaction and physical contact has been missing for the last five or six months. And I'm just wondering, I, ideally, I, I, I would rather maybe five weeks, an extra week, because the first week is kind of testing them and seeing where they're at. And you've only got, I think we're, we're looking at maybe a window of four weeks before we commence a league program. I'm guessing here now, because as you might say, Nathan, we won't know until the latter stages of next week mm. what kind of a calendar of fixtures we're going to have. But I'm, I, I'm hoping it, it, it'll be um, a single block, a, a, a league fixtures, four or five league games or whatever it is, um, and then moving maybe into championship. I don't think they'll break for club, but I'm only speculating. We're just waiting to see what's going to happen. But and I'm sure the GPA and there will be some element of consultation with county chairman and hopefully the players to see what best suits but uh um yeah it's a concern though as regards uh, the getting back and uh you will be a little bit worried about injury so my 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 experts who work with me tell me lads it's got to be slowly slowly for the first week or two and everybody should be playing on the same level f- 11 field i i'll be honest with you Nathan, i don't think there are too many counties back collectively trained despite the rumors and i had a phone call there just before come on air this evening from a, a guy in dublin he said i heard uh, there's cars all in around the kill park you know someone has a photograph of you know uh, sponsored cars uh, that the male uh, players driving around uh, the kill park i can say uh, with my well, nearly 90 percent accuracy that's not not the case because i have a son my son johnny is on uh, um, on the development squad with the male county board and he's never trained in there collectively i know that for a fact he lives at home with me so there is a lot of speculation going on about teams uh, training collectively i don't think it's happening i think there might be small pods uh, going but certainly no coach, and anyone that uh, um, I suppose sends out the coach and formalises it in that way, that's really raising a flag. And I think that uh, when uh, Dublin reflect on this, they, were, they say, because that was a bit stupid and a bit naive of us, we should have done it better, maybe under the cover of darkness, but uh, obviously there was a tip off somewhere, somewhere along the line, someone uh, tipped them off and uh, yeah. here we have the big news. I think part of it was under the cover of darkness. And I think, yeah, you're right, John, that most people look at this and go, I cannot believe they were that stupid to turn up in their sponsored cars for a collective training session. Cullum, what happens next then? Because, so there's the 12 week suspension. The GEA are still investigating. The Gardaí are investigating the incident. They say that they're making inquiries into reports of alleged breaches of COVID regulations. Regulation 11 places restrictions on training events. It's not declared to be a penal regulation. In terms of how quickly the GEA investigation concludes and how likely we'll get to know that final punishment, that final disciplinary action, do you think it'll be a speedy process? Oh, I think so, because obviously Dublin have uh, acknowledged wrongdoing here, so there's there's no defence here. So it's it's in the hands of the GA, which I presume the management committee would probably take something like that and suspend, uh, officially suspend under uh, under misconduct. Now, bear in mind that it was Mayo that suspended three of their own senior management backroom team for uh, for accessing without authorization Crow Park on the day of the All Ireland final, and it was Mayo that suspended that suspended those three mm. uh, in that respect. And the GA didn't add to those suspensions at the time, or they didn't they didn't look into it. It was Mayo actually conducted and close that investigation. So whether this follows that way, I, I just don't think so. I think management will want to have a look at this themselves and maybe establish a few more facts around it. I'm sure they've questions to ask of, of Dublin, but I, I do think it will happen quickly. I think if it stays at 12 weeks, uh, given the expected schedule, and that's five rounds of a league, including a semi-final and final and the relegation playoff uh, on the same weekend as a semi-final for football, um, perhaps a week's break then to the start of a knockout provincial championship. Um, that would probably leave Desi Farrell back uh, a week and a couple of days before uh, they'd play in a Leinster quarterfinal. Dublin would be straight into a Leinster quarterfinal. They'd have a buy into it. And I would say that would be around the first week in July. I'm only guessing here. This is only speculation. I don't, I don't know for sure. But that's around the time frame that I think Dublin would be back in action, which is... Uh, early July, first weekend in July, and he would be back off suspension, able to take his place on the sideline, provided it's the three months that sticks and nothing nothing is added to in that respect. So he, he will miss the league for sure. Dublin have made sure of that. He will miss the league. Uh, anything else after that is really down to the GA. We're getting a huge amount of texts in on this and uh, 
I won't say split evenly, but certainly reaction on both sides, which maybe reflects the way the country is right now regarding the COVID rules and regulations. Uh, Colin, one person texted in saying they've driven past two clubs in Armagh this evening. Both were training. What are the rules in Northern Ireland right now around inter-county training? Uh, the Northern Ireland executive have not revoked the elite status from the inter-county teams there. The GAA obviously has prohibited training for everybody in the North until until April 12th. So from April 12th, uh, all club teams in the North will be will be able to train, but the inter-county teams won't because the GAA have uh, the GAA won't be sanctioning that until the 19th. Now I presume they will align that. That has to be decided yet, I think, about the inter-county teams. Now that the decision has been made down south for the 19th, I presume that the GA will align it for inter-county teams in the north to officially return training on the 19th also. In the interest of fairness, I mean, this, you know, fa- fairness and be seen to be fair as everybody goes on the 19th. So there's not there's not going to be any dispensation just because, uh, well, the teams in the six counties could be training anyway if the GA had prohibited it. That's That mm. was never revoked, as I said. So I would think the 19th, but for everybody else, the 12th. So obviously if there's someone has driven by a grounds in our man, they're there. It, it, it's a clear breach because grounds are not supposed to be open until the 12th up there. Yeah, and just the last one, John, on the lack of sportsmanship, which uh, a couple of people have texted in on. It really irks me. They broke the rules knowing other teams are under duress to respect the rules and are capitalising on dishonesty to get an edge while also eroding the resolve of other teams. Do Dublin really want to win in that manner? What a hollow victory it would be, especially for a support where it's supposed to be all about pride and representing your community. Your players haven't trained, John, and they're heading into a league campaign and heading into a championship campaign. And have you got a sense at all from the players about how annoyed and how peeved that they they are that Dublin have done this? Uh, look, I, I, yeah, I, a, I suppose they're looking over. I, I had a, one or two comments, not necessarily from Offaly, and they were they're speculating well, if, it, if it was the Leicester County, would it be dealt with differently? We don't know how they're going to deal with Dublin as of yet, but uh, look at the GA needs government. Like I mean, there's all sorts of wild speculation and suggestions. Oh, they'll be thrown out of the championship. For God's sake, we don't want to open throughout the championship. Like I mean, the reality is people are craving for live sport. We want action on our TVs. The uh, communities want uh, and the, the dogs playing because you know everybody marvels at how wonderful they are. So punishing them in any way, I, I'm taking them out of the, the court park. Is not a punishment because the country teams love going to play in Court Park. Every young kid dreams of playing in Court Park, as hockey footballers would as well. So, what's a realistic punishment for it? I don't think there's anything will be real, you know, punishing Des Farrell by a three month suspension. Suspense. And he's, he's stuck that up for the, you know, taking one for the team. Yeah, yeah. I suppose there's another, I suppose, suggestion out there the fact that League of Ireland clubs. Uh, are, are are able to play and train and with rugby every weekend? You know that's that's a a, a problem. Well, they are professional. I've lost you. No, you're gone, John. John is gone. Uh, yeah. That that is not yeah, a debate. Was, we might we might we might come back to that, John. Uh, and it probably is uh, a bigger issue as you touched on there, Colm, as well around the question of the broader plan been in serious jeopardy as to the loss of that elite status and what brought it about. But um, Colm Keyes and John Mon, uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, reflecting on the day that was for the Dublin footballers, Desi Farrell suspended by his own county board for 12 weeks. Thanks to everybody who got in touch. The GA should give every county manager 48 hours to admit if any such training has gone on. Well, John Mahon has already said there haven't been an awfully if anybody admits it, they also get a 12-week suspension. If they don't admit it and are subsequently found to have done so, put the county out of competition for a year. I'd say we'd be amazed how many would come out of the woodwork. Very disappointed in this Dublin team as a dub, but would like to know how many others were at it, says Sean in Lucan. Lads, it's not a mistake or an error of judgment. This was planned and deliberate. Penalty should be severe, says Frankie and Loud. It's not the optics. They broke the law and let the country down. Think back to Golfgate and people lost their jobs and a couple more to get through they should have suspended the nine it would give the other counties a chance says Harry in Louth and I'm in Sandy Mount at the moment soccer match being played says Anne so uh, on a nice sunny evening there's a lot of sport being played around the country it seems and thank you for all uh, for letting us know exactly where it's happening we'll come back to this no doubt tomorrow on OTB AM and across the coming days and we're going to talk to one of the best hurlers in the country at the moment Keen Lynch is going to join us Off the Ball on News Talk 
The Pat Kenny Show. There was one particular comment on social media that was shared, liked and retweeted, I think, nearly 400 times. And what it simply said was, here's the Mayor of Galway again. He needs to be tied to a rock and put at the bottom of River Corrup. I mean, that is, that, that is a death threat. 